Chapter 17, Electric Illumination. For another half hour, we walked upon a pavement of bones. We were filled with curiosity. I was prepared for any surprise. We advanced in silence, bathed in light from luminous electric fluid that coated all around us. By some unexplainable phenomenon, it lit up all sides of every object equally. We were men without shadows. After walking a mile, we reached the outskirts of a vast forest. There was a soft carpet of moss and a few sparkling streams but there was no color or scent to any of the plants i wondered if nature had provided vegetable nourishment here wouldn't there be mammals too suddenly i halted and i drew back my uncle i saw vast colossal forms moving amongst the trees it was a herd of mastodons not fossil remains but living specimens i heard the crashing noises they made as they walked my earlier dreams of live creatures of the prehistoric world were now realized look my uncle then said suddenly at a distance of a quarter of a mile stood a human being watching this herd of mastodons like a shepherd it was a giant he was at least twelve feet tall his head huge and unshapely was half hidden in the thick and tangled growth of his unkempt hair he wielded an enormous bow like a staff to manage his herd we stood petrified and speechless with amazement what if he saw us we had to get away from there in another quarter of an hour, we were beyond the reach of this creature. It is absurd to believe that humans lived in this underground world with no connection to the inhabitants on its surface. It may have been some animal whose structure resembled that of a human, but that a man, a living man, and therefore a whole generation doubtless besides, should be there in the bowels of the earth was impossible. We left behind the luminous forest, dumb with astonishment. We kept running on for fear the creature might be on our track. As we moved on, we realized that we had returned to the north of the Liedenbrock Sea. Our surroundings were foreign, and yet seemed familiar at the same time. I thought I recognized the bed of fossil woods Hans used to make our raft, the Hansbach, and the grotto in which I had recovered. Then a few paces ahead, we encountered a strange stream, then cliffs that didn't look like those at Port Gretchen. My uncle agreed. He didn't recognize anything either. Evidently, I said, we have not landed at our original starting point. The storm must have carried us a little higher. If we follow the shore, we'll find poor Gretchen. If that is the case, it will be useless to continue our exploration. We'd better return to our raft, my uncle said. But, Alex, are you sure you're not mistaken? I don't know for sure, I said. All of these rocks are so much alike. Yet I think I recognize the cape where Hans constructed our raft. We must be very near the port, if indeed this is not it. But we should at least find traces of our own activities here, my uncle said. I do see something, I cried, darting upon an object lying on the sand. I showed my uncle a rusty dagger, which I had just picked up. Did you have this weapon with you, he asked. No, but maybe you did, I suggested. Not that I am aware of, my uncle said. Well, this is strange, I sighed. No, it is very simple, my uncle said. The Icelanders often wear arms of this kind. This must have belonged to Hans, and he has lost it. I shook my head. I knew that Hans had never had an object like this in his possession. Maybe it belonged to some living man like the one we saw in the forest, I suggested. But no, this is not a relic of the Stone Age. It is not even of the Iron Age. This blade is steel. My uncle stopped me abruptly. This is a 16th century dagger. It was never yours, mine, or Hans's. It didn't belong to any of those human beings who may or may not inhabit this inner world. My uncle was getting excited and was allowing his imagination to run away with him. We are on the way toward the grand discovery. This blade has been here for hundreds of years, he cried, but it didn't get here by itself. Someone has been here before us, I exclaimed. A man who has engraved his name somewhere with that dagger to mark the way to the center of the earth. Let us look, he said. We walked along a steep cliff and found a passage no wider than a couple of yards. Between two boldly projecting rocks, we found the mouth of a dark tunnel. There, upon a granite slab, appeared two etched letters, half eaten away by time. They were the initials of the bold and daring traveler. A.S., my uncle shouted. You see, Arn Saknusum.